Hey guys, what is up? What's going on out there today? Brent Abel here, webtennis.com, another episode of 7 Around 7. Here we are, 8 a.m. Mountain Time Zone, 7 a.m. out there in the West Coast. And uh, hope you're having a great day, a uh, great start to your day if you're catching it live this morning or maybe you're on the replay, whatever. Uh, it's all good. And uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, kind of changing our mindset on, you know, on the slice backhand. And I think that the slice backhand sort of conjures up this image of kind of this passive, almost like a, you know, a, a little rally ball type of type of backhand. And uh, just like we worked on, you know, recently, a couple of weeks ago with the more offensive topspin forehand rally ball, I want us to change our thinking on this slice back in. And really what I what I think of it more as, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think of it as, you know, topspin sort of has this, this sense of being more offensive, um, you know, a bigger type of shot. And, uh, and the slice word to me is just a little bit too passive as opposed to an underspin, topspin up right? Underspin down, um, but making it way more offensive with an underspin backhand drive, right? And and I think that we need to kick it up a notch uh, in terms of our thinking about what we can actually do with the backhand. And I, you know, there's there, there's a couple of reasons um, that, that over the years, I think I've decided that my staple backhand is an underspin drive, and the reason for that is that I'm more accurate with it in terms of where, where do I want it to cross the top of the net? Where do I want it to land over there? Um, I can actually um, get much more consistent depth with it. And, you know, depth is whether it's coming in as a topspin or whether it's coming in as a underspin backhand, depth is it's kind of the same thing. I mean, the topper, unless it's really massive top that just explodes up off the court, it can kind of sit there. And the same thing with a slice back in, it can kind of sit there. Sometimes we don't mind it sitting there if it's if it's really deep, but lots of the times if it's not, man, it's just an opportunity for that opponent to kind of take charge. So to me, I'm more accurate, uh, not only placement wise but depth wise with my with my underspin uh, backhand. Um, I, I feel like I can hit the thing with power and not risk and not risk that, that, that baseline over there. Um, it's way more efficient in terms of, you know, burning fuel out of the tank. To me, the top spin backhand, um, not only does your spatial distance away from the path of that incoming ball to set up for a topper have to be really good because it's pretty tough to improvise the top spin backhand um, if your spacing is not good, as opposed to the slice, you can actually, you know, you can sort of fudge a little bit on spacing with the slice backhand, excuse me, the underspin backhand, uh, way more than you can with a topper. And so in terms of threat, a long match, right? If you're going to play a long two setter, a long three setter, why would we be choosing technique that burns more fuel out of the tank? than technique that actually conserves it and yet still gives us, thanks, man, still gives us, um, you know, a lot of shot choices. I mean, the top spin backhand, basically, I do use it, like if someone, if someone really plays a deep ball to my backhand where I've got to pick it up right off the bounce, I'm going to go with more of a, a semi-flat topper pickup on the rise drive rather than backing up. And, and kind of giving away core position and then kind of hacking down on it, right? Um, and there's certainly times on, on a passing shot when I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and top it because I want it to dip. I'm still thinking of a two-shot play um, on, on that pass, but lots of times. And I got all kinds of examples in points that I played in tournaments that I can show you where I'm passing cleanly with, a, with an underspin uh backhand drive. So there's a lot of reasons. Um, I think the other one that's really important is disguise, right? Is that you can disguise what you're about to do 
with uh, an underspin backhand setup position, right? I mean, if you're looking at the picture right here, uh, obviously I could, if I wanted to, um, I could drive it, right? Uh, I could, uh, if I wanted to, I could also play it a dropper. Well, it's really tough to disguise that off of a, off of a top spin backhand um, setup position. I'm not saying that you should never play a topper. I just said that, no, I mean, there, there, there's several times when I want to use it, but I think what I want to do today is change your mindset on this thing. And let's stop thinking of it as a slice. Uh, a slice to me is more like a chip and charge um, where you're using kind of more of court position as the challenge, as opposed to a ground stroke underspin Let's ignite the natural afterburners that we've got with this shot and stop being so passive with it. Let's get more offensive. Um, I think one of the things that when I've got, and I did, and this happened recently in Asheville, North Carolina, when I played, when I played uh, the two events there is that uh, I had probably four or five web tennis uh, players, subscribers show up, introduce themselves. We spent some time, um, you know, meeting each other and just kind of yakking about stuff. But I would say the most common thing was got Brent, man, that backhand, that backhand drive you've got, uh, the underspin is, I want it. <laughs> and, and uh, so look, um, the next few days, I want to talk about this. I want to get you, first of all, changing your mindset on it, um, but give you some ideas of, of maybe, well, changing your, your mindset, number one, on let's make it way more offensive. Let's let's start thinking this as an offensive power type of shot that actually has got more accuracy than a topper. Um, and and we'll do some other things over, over the over the next couple of days with it. Um, so, guys, look, I want to hear from you. What's on your mind down below in the comments area? Let me know what's happening with your slice, with your underspin backhand that you want to get pretty quickly fixed. Right. Um, you know, if I had the magic wand and could, you know, wave it over you and, and change it, you know, what's happening now? What's the result that you're getting that you don't like? And typically what I what I hear is, well, you know, my backhand is it just kind of floats the slice, the inner spin, it just kind of floats and sits up over there um, without much accuracy. Right. Without much con without much consistency. Uh, but maybe it's something different for you. But I would love to. I would love to read and I'll definitely respond to you. What's on your mind down in the comments area below, or you can shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. Um, before I let you go here, let me just kind of show you a couple of these underspins that I want you to feel that you can actually drive it, right? I Here we go. Um, I want you to feel that you can drive this thing. And look, it's not a super open face, um, a super uh, open racket face, right? It, it's it's a little flat at contact, but bang, right there. All right. And that's and that's what that's what I want to help you guys with this week. So look, guys, down below again, let me know what's on your mind. And it's time, as always, we got to get out there, wherever there is for you. Help someone else have a great day. Guys, I'll see you again tomorrow.